Aliens are being crushed by moons all over the galaxy. In this video, you'll find out why moons could be the reason why we haven't discovered any aliens yet. So be sure to stay tuned until the end to find out more and get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people who will learn something. Thanks guys and welcome. Surely you've often admired our moon on a clear night outside, right? It's a real feast for the eyes, and the cosmic object that has inspired mankind to philosophize about the infinite expanses up there since the beginning of time. And what I particularly appreciate about the moon is that it won't crash into the earth and destroy us in agony. Thank you, moon. That's very kind of you. On the contrary, the earth's moon is gradually moving away from the earth by 3.8 centimeters every year. This so-called lunar drift is caused by the interaction between the Earth's gravity and the Moon's tidal friction. Tidal friction is not only a good word for Scrabble but also an exciting physical phenomenon. In very simplified terms, this is what happens. Due to the gravitational pull and movement of the Moon, the oceans of the Earth are deformed into a kind of mountain and valley landscape, while at the same time the mainland is slightly lifted by the pressure of the oceans. So the Earth is deformed by the Moon, as amazing as that sounds. Oh, that's why I'm always so chubby in the evening. This deformation of the Earth by the lunar tidal forces creates friction effects that generate energy in the form of heat. If I need this plush Earth here for years, it will also generate heat at some point. In the long term, the tidal forces slow down the Earth's rotation. The length of the day increases minimally every year but the total angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system remains the same. This must be the case because it is a fundamental law of physics that the angular momentum of closed systems is conserved. So if the angular momentum from the Earth's own rotation decreases, the angular momentum of the Moon's orbit must increase, and mathematically this is only possible if the Moon moves away from the Earth. The Moon is so eager to need us passionately that it is even prepared to move away from us in the long term. Shakespeare really couldn't have thought it up any better. However, this lunar escape is so slow that it will not have any dangerous consequences for us on a human scale. Other species in the universe, on the other hand, could have major problems with their months. Our galaxy alone, the Milky Way, is full of exomoons. We haven't discovered any yet, but that's only because our telescopes aren't good enough yet. It is estimated that there are at least 400 to 800 billion planets in the Milky Way, probably even more than a trillion. Due to the high number of moons of the gas planets, each planet in our solar system has an average of just under 15 moons. So if we reckon there are a trillion planets in the galaxy, there are around 15 trillion exomoons. I know kind of a milk-a-toast calculation, but it's also about the Milky Way. Where do these jokes always come from? According to a new research paper, this mass of exomoons could be the solution to the Fermi paradox. As a reminder, the Fermi paradox states the following. As big as our galaxy alone is, there must actually be extraterrestrial life somewhere. But we have never discovered any trace of it, and that is somehow paradoxical. And now the frightening answer that researchers have now developed. Extraterrestrial life is permanently destroyed by exomoons on the planet on which it originates because these moons crash into the planets. Reminds me a bit of the movie Moonfall. Let me know if you've seen it and what you thought of it. I saw it in the cinema and even though I wasn't expecting much realism, the film's complete lack of meaning left me feeling somewhat perplexed. But I'm curious to hear what you think. However, some of you may now be wondering. If our moon is moving away from us, why would aliens be destroyed by their moons? Makes no sense at all, dude. Not all moons are moving away from their planets. Some are moving towards their planets. This can happen when moons are destabilized by their interactions with other moons. We know this from our solar system in a very special form. For example, from Saturn's small moon Janus. Janus moves in an orbit that sometimes passes very close to another Saturn moon called Epimetheus. The mutual gravitational effect between the two moons causes them to swap orbits whereby Janus descends to an orbit that brings it closer to Saturn, while Epimetheus ascends to a higher orbit that takes it further away from Saturn. 
This change of orbit between the two moons takes place approximately every four years. In this case, it doesn't end with the most extreme scenario of an impact on Saturn, but we can see that there can be more complex relationships in a multi-moon system than in any daily soap opera. Well, you hold the lighter, let me look. All right. <laughs> and in some cases, this can become so extreme that a moon hits the surface of a planet. Astrophysicist Jonathan Branda, one of the authors of the current research paper mentioned, says, Every few weeks, there seems to be a CGI video showing the destruction of the Earth by a cosmic impactor. If you were unlucky enough to live in the primordial ooze of a young rocky exoplanet, you could find out what you would actually do in that situation. According to the researcher's simulation, it is very common for unstable moons to form and then crash into the planet, especially in the early phase of star systems with planets that are relatively close to their star. So if it is true, and many planets experience such a violent collision in their first billion years, then this could often mean a painful end for extraterrestrial life. If an alien primordial soup has just formed on this planet, and the first alien bacterium has decided to evolve into a higher life form, and then the moon hits, the evolution of life is abruptly ended, and with it, the potential formation of an intelligent alien species many years later. Imagine if the Earth's moon had collided with the Earth almost three and a half billion years ago. I have simulated here what that would have looked like. It would have crushed the first microbes, and I wouldn't be standing here now producing this cool YouTube video for you. Which, by the way, you were just about to give a thumbs up to. It all sounds a bit far-fetched, I admit. Is there any way to check that? Yes. Researchers suspect that such collisions produce clouds of dust that we can see from Earth. These dust clouds that arise from the apocalyptic collisions are illuminated and heated by the light of the respective star, which we can then see with infrared telescopes. And we have actually observed such infrared clouds which could potentially indicate a planet-moon collision. More than 12 times given the mass of planets and moons in the galaxy, that doesn't seem like a lot. You have to bear in mind that these dust clouds are only visible for 10,000 years before they dissipate. And 10,000 years is really the blink of an eye on a cosmic scale. So we have to assume that this has happened very, very often in the course of the galaxy's existence. How many worlds have been changed forever? How many life forms have been robbed of their evolution? How many alien empires have not come into existence because the primordial amoebae were destroyed by exomoons? Okay, I got a bit carried away. Exactly how many times this has happened remains speculation. And it's certainly not the only answer to the Fermi paradox, but it's one of many. This is one of the reasons why there are probably fewer alien species than you might think at first glance. Good for us that we have escaped this fate because our moon will never hit the Earth, but maybe a large asteroid will. Such an event could destroy humanity, which is why NASA is working on defensive measures and has sent a space probe to hit an asteroid. Shortly after the impact, something super mysterious happened that NASA researchers absolutely cannot explain. You can find out all about it and the exciting original footage of this impact in the video below. And if you want to support my work, don't forget to check out the Astro Shop. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.